Oh, it's a good day to give thanks to the Lord. This is Rebecca Haney. It's been a good day. It's been a long week and it is. it feels like we're on the precipice of a new era. We're about to make history in our nation, no matter what. One way or another. It's, it's guaranteed, isn't it, Dan? Dan Hudson <laughs> from Pathway Church is our expert guest uh, today. And Dan, I, I'm so glad to see you. We need a voice of hope today. Can you fill oh, in? Boy. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, you, history, we're either going to land the plane on America or, or we'll be <laughs> taken off to a new great horizon, maybe. <laughs> and check your check your parachutes, everybody. <laughs> right, Buckle right. Up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Oh, um, it's true. No matter what happens, we're going to make history one way yeah. or another. And yeah. I I pray for the future of my nation. All kidding aside, I think that this uh, America has been extraordinarily blessed as a nation and that we've um, done some extraordinarily good things throughout history. Um, but every each and every nation has a rise and a fall. And so what I pray is that our nation will continue to be able to shine the light of Christ and to be a shining city on the hill to uh, kind of co-opt Ronald Reagan's famous paraphrase of Jesus' words. But ultimately, God's kingdom is not of this world. And right. we are ambassadors for the heavenly kingdom. I, I love my home here on earth and my nation. I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And uh, enough to get to that, I guess. But I, I, am, I recognize that I am here an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven. And so what we're going to talk about today, God willing, is uh, a perspective as as we look at the future of our nation, the impact that Christians can have in America for the future of our country, how to pray faithfully, how to be a righteous nation, because yes, that is possible. And yes, that is a good thing. Um, some of the obstacles that are in our way, but also the eternal hope that we have, no matter what, no matter how we make history in the coming days, that we still ultimately can rest in the hope that the sovereign Lord is on the throne and that nothing can shake him from that position. Does that sound like a, a fun ride? Man, that, sound, that sounds good. It's, it's kind of funny because when you start getting this time of the season of each, you know, electoral season, uh, uh, people, people that kind of throw their brains out a little bit, I mean, they get, you, you get, if you're on one side or the other, you, you just cheer for that person, you know, and, and you just don't use your brain on the, thinking about what's going on, really. You're just like, you know, Trump's the Messiah. He's going to save the world. And, and or, uh, you know, Kamala, she's going to do the greatest thing. She's ever, you know, the best ever. And, <coughs> excuse me, man. Um, I, I think I, I, both both of those are probably not true. You, you know? <laughs> I mean. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Trump will align with my values much better, whether he has them or not. I'm I'm a little bit doubtful. You, mm. you know whether he really he does not share the convictions I, I share. He tends to at least understand that I uh, he is representing people who are voting for him, and that's I think he could have gone either way when he tried to decide what am I going to be a Democrat or Republican. He's a business guy, so all along he supported both for for decades. You know. Yeah, he's making a deal. Right. Yeah. That's that's what he does. And and his first four years, he he kept his side of the deal. Mm -hmm. I voted for things and he's like, all right. And he did it. I'm like, OK, so so, I, so I'm I'm on his team. I'm Team Trump. I'll say it right off the bat. I don't yeah. see him as Messiah. I don't see him as a a, a moral bastion of, you know, um, someone we should follow. <laughs> Maybe mm -hmm. quite the opposite. Um, I, I see the other side as the as the complete opposite of everything Christ, you know, talks about the biblical uh, values that that are represented in scripture they they i mean they they are not interested at all and they're very vocal about that um but it, it's just interesting to see how people just kind of disengage because like okay i look at let's say my side wins right which i'm hoping they do and i'm praying they do and i feel like they're going to uh, we, i feel that every time <laughs> he has put together a, a coalition of a pretty impressive bipartisan coalition but that means there is cancer in the body, right? Mm. I, I mean, there, there are people who morally completely disagree with everything I agree with. So I don't know what that looks like 10 years down the road. You know, yeah. I, I mean, like the whole thing has been evolving in my lifetime. Democrats are now basically socialists and Republicans are basically Democrats. And I don't know who's Republicans now. And and like, I think I think the whole thing is merging together into some interesting gray matter of, of and I don't know what it's going to look like in the next election. You, you right. Know? Um, which is not what you asked, but that's, that's what's kind of been on my mind. It, it, it's <laughs> That's okay. I appreciate like, your fortune. 
Yeah. I appreciate yeah. your portrait of the amorphous toxic blob that is manifesting I mean, itself in Washington, DC. You know, that'll be again one for the history book. If we still exist yeah, in the next yeah, yeah. 50 years, this will be a good one for the history books. And yeah. I, I see the the cultural trends and changes have been concerning, have been shocking. For the most part, I don't see a lot of great momentum happening. And in particular, these are places where Christians have largely abdicated, right? Mm -hmm. We see it in Hollywood, we see it in academia, we see it in government and increasingly in government bureaucracy. So there isn't a lot about D.C. that changes when a new administration comes in. And that has yeah. been the case for the last 75, 80 years when after after in particular after um, FDR and then after the Great Society from LBJ that starts building on this. A lot of this had to do with creating an infrastructure, right, a big system of that we say bureaucracy. That just means people who are appointed rather than elected. And so you've got all of these three letter agencies, essentially, that that mm -hmm. we have increasingly seen take more and more control over our lives lives. The reason that it matters who's at the top is not because the president is supposed to be the king or the queen. It's because they appoint the people who then appoint all the people that have mm -hmm. charge over our taxation, over our food policy, over what our children are taught in schools, over you know what our security as a nation, over our foreign policy, things like that. So it goes much deeper than just the person at the top, but it is very concerning to me that we have increasingly less and less voice, less and less impact in America where we're supposed to be get this a representative republic we're supposed to be that those folks that rule over us are supposed to actually answer to us we're supposed to be the boss in this scenario and i think we've gotten it twisted for so long that it's almost like i'm a voice crying in the wilderness to remind people of this we keep right. hearing we're a democracy save the democracy trump is a threat to democracy and i'm over here with like the one picket sign that says we're not a democracy we're, we're not <laughs> We're let actually the, a let republic, the democracy go. <laughs> and we're supposed to to actually be accountable to the Constitution. And our our employees in Washington and in our state capitals, respectively, are supposed to be accountable to us. I mean, that was a pretty good system. I don't know when and why we rejected it, but I just I like it. I'd like to try yeah. that again. But one of the things that's so concerning and why it gets so swampy is because these people are career bureaucrats, and they are invested in maintaining the bureaucracy. Not yeah. which is the opposite of maintaining personal individual freedom or constitutional rights for the folks that they're actually supposed to be serving. So yeah. you can see you can see where the mess might start yeah. to, to roll downhill. They have taken the baton from previous generations of of career politicians who invested their entire lives to figure out how to work the loopholes. And so each generation grabs that baton and works a little more to the point where like, yeah, I mean, we're functioning completely outside of the constitution. And, and because we also put the government in charge of the education, most of the people don't even realize it. They're like, Oh, it's great. Yeah. Uh, he'll give me a phone. I'm, I'm voting for that guy, uh, you know, or girl or whatever. And, and we, we've, we've, it's really sad to be on the mm -hmm. outside well, while on the inside, the outside kind of looking in and going, man, you guys have destroyed our country. And I think that that is why like Trump is so popular with the populace. It, it, people who have never voted before are like, I'm voting now. You know, they, they, they yeah. everybody, whether they understand the depths of what you just said, they, they intuitively get there, there's this is out of control and something has to change it. If he can or not, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. we, we know they don't want him to. I mean, look at the assassination attempts. Look at the uh, jail attempts. Look at, look at, I mean, all the things they've done. They've done everything they can to stop him. All agencies of the government are, are scared mm -hmm. to death of him. And I hope that the society rises up and says, yeah, you should be scared of us. We're putting him in office and, and you know, we're going to put things back then, the way they belong. Then a clean house. Yeah. Right? That, I mean, that's, that's what we're hoping for. Who knows what will actually happen? I think after with four years under his ex experience, I think he went in before kind of blindly thought, well, I'll just say it and it will happen and realize, oh, man, this is deeper and wider of a swamp than I think he even realized. Like I have, I, you know, I don't know, but, but it appears that way. And I think he'll have a better plan and a better idea of who who's who and what's what and, and how to clean. So I really hope he wins and I really hope he cleans. Yeah. Well, and, and as we talk about this today, there's a couple of thoughts that I have just in general about Christians and voting. Yeah. Um, so aside from this, we, we have to understand the times in which we live, right? Be sons of, of Issachar, if you'll forgive the reference, because uh, I'm not a son, but I, and nor do I identify as one. I just feel the need to clarify <laughs> my pronouns for everybody. I am a woman because that's how God designed me and there's no changing, <laughs> nor do I want to. 
Uh, uh, but to be a, a son or daughter, as the case may be, of Issachar is a reference uh, in the Old Testament that they were people who knew the times in which they lived and they knew what to do. Yeah. Uh, and so that's that's a noble thing in scripture. I think we live in a far from perfect world, a far from perfect society, we um, a fallen world, you might even say. But that's not an excuse to, um, I think, do evil that good may come or to resist doing the good that might be in your power to do. So in this particular election, let's just address um, at the outset, Dan, there's a lot of Christians that are so conflicted and feel like the whole situation is so scummy and that there isn't a great choice. I, I mean, in terms of life, like we've debated and gone into the details specifically about disappointments on abortion policy th that uh, have been you know, produced by both campaigns. There's really no contest in my mind mind, you've got one that uh, seems to be kind of putting life on the back burner at the very least, sort of like half measures and undercutting and saying, well, maybe it's my job. Maybe it's really not. We'll kind of just see. We'll see what it's up to the people. And that's disappointing to me because I don't believe that the right to life for anybody is up to the people. I think that yeah. each individual is created in the image of God and that we all deserve protection, that if even one innocent life is allowed to be carelessly, callously slaughtered, then nobody's right to life is safe. And it is the responsibility of the government to protect that inherent right to life. No one should be allowed to legislate that or, or take it away as though you're less than a human being. I, cards on the table. I really struggle with that position. On the other side, though, on the other hand, you have people that are crying in bloodthirsty fervor and celebrating the death of innocent children in a parking lot outside their convention. Purveying, yeah. they have blood, literally now, because of these policies, they have blood of innocent children on their hands mm -hmm. and they want to spread that and they want to promote that. And they want to say, yes, yay, more death because death equals freedom for women, which is an utter lie from the pit of hell. And I will mm -hmm. have none of it. And I cannot, <laughs> I cannot go quietly and, and not speak up against that type of just outright evil. And I don't know how many people are, are, you know, promoting this in a demo demonic type of fashion. We talked about open, like what it means yeah. to be serving yeah. the devil last time we talked. And it's scary, but there are lots of people that are deceived into thinking that it's good or thinking that it's somehow a moral virtue that in some cases it may be sad, but it's warranted. I've just, I've had enough. I've had mm -hmm. enough of Christians justifying this and saying that, you know, somehow it's okay or, you know, the rest yeah. of her policies or Trump is so bad or whatever that might, there's no excuse for this Christians. There's none. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm putting my foot down. <laughs> there's <laughs> I, no I have... more, no more of this abortion on our oh, watch. Absolutely. And we yeah. have to stand up for that when we have the opportunity. I, I've heard a uh, very respected uh, Christian leaders in conservative movements say that how they look at it, these are people who support Harris. And, and the way look, they look at it, they say, well, the Democrat party takes care of people from birth through the end of their life. They look at the whole picture and say, they, they take so much better care of people older that, that, they, that they have to put aside the, the abortion issue. And, I, and I, I'm with you, I'm like, no, no, no. You can't put aside killing children who have no defense whatsoever. I mean, I mean, all they, all they, their only goal in life is just to breathe. You know, that's their next yeah. thing. They're just growing. They're just in, in, in the safest place in the universe, in their mother's womb. And, and uh, anybody who says, oh no, let's just go ahead and chop that up into pieces. And, and, you know, it's just, you know, no, that disqualifies them for anything of leadership at all. Yeah. In, in my opinion, I don't, I don't care what they do with the rest of the people. I mean, I do care, but I'm, you know what I'm saying? If, yeah. if they can't get the base right, how can you trust them on literally anything else? Mm -hmm. I mean, you just can't. You can't trust them with anything. And yeah. so it's highly disappointing when I hear people say that. And, and again, they're intelligent people, people I used to respect that I, you know, for the last eight years, whatever, how long they started saying this kind of stuff. I thought, nope, I, you're, you're done. I'm done with you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't I don't follow them in any way. I don't listen to them um, other than I hear their statements. And I think that is ridiculous. It's absolutely mm -hmm. insane uh, for a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ. They say, oh, the, 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 the unborn baby thing's no big deal. Like, yeah, yeah you, uh, I'm totally it's on board a, with you there. I don't see how we can can justify it any longer. And that's yeah. and, and I've seen it happen in fairness because I believe in fairness. Right. Um, I've seen this happen for Republican politicians my whole life, too. The people mm -hmm. that say that they're pro-life, but then they get in and they vote against 
um, you know, any of the the pro-life bills that we would put up there or they would avoid, they would like undercut it in the committee in the back rooms. And I would yeah. tell people this and they're like, well, you know, they're better than the other guy. I'm like, really? Really? Because if you can't trust them on life, then how are they any different than the other guy? So right. this is not a party thing. It's just so much clearer because the Democrat Party has become not just the party of safe, legal and rare, as it was in the Clinton era, but it's now openly abortion now, abortion forever, abortion for all time, abortion we'll for all for people. What, and, yeah. you're, and you'll pay for it. Yeah, you'll right. pay for it, America. There will be no yeah. conscientious objections. There will be no exceptions for religious people or religious doctors, religious hospitals. No. You will be forced to comply. And yeah. I think as I was um, looking at this, this bigger question of how now shall we vote? I know we've talked about this in the past, but for me, I'm breaking it down into, th into three different categories as we approach the ballot box. And for some people, you've already voted. And maybe by the time you hear this, you'll have already voted. So I pray that this will be helpful as you continue to move forward in citizenship. I'm filtering my vote through three separate category cr criteria. And their criteria that I find actually from, if we step back from the foundations of our nation, I think that's a good place to start at where that's we began. Place. And uh, so even before there was the Constitution, we laid the Constitution kind of quantified and packaged up and set the, the boundaries over how our government would operate. But it was built on the philosophy of America that, that sparked the revolution and said, yes, this is a nation. This is a vision worth defending because this is a nation that we've created in, in, in what? To stand for what? Thomas Jefferson and his compadres wrote this out in a little old declaration. And they said, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, meaning they come from God. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, government is instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, and that when any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, to institute new government, laying its foundations on such principles and organizing in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. So that three-pronged approach of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that's where I'm going to, to guide my vote and I'm praying with every every little circle that I fill in every little person that I that I vote for and I've been known to write you in so if you're my friend just watch out you may <laughs> you may end up on the board of supervisors you don't even know um but to to focus on the person's person or persons that I believe most likely to defend my inalienable right and the rights of my children to life, like we've just covered, this is a non-negotiable for the Christian. And I believe also this fits into um, the, the um, what am I thinking of? The sanctity of somebody's gender also fits into this category mm -hmm. because this is how God has created us, male and female. You defend our right to exist, first of all, but you also defend God's design for male and female. And if you're saying that nine-year-old girls can chop off their body part, their healthy body parts, so that they can pretend that they're a boy and then never again be able to have children, never again be able to reproduce, never know the, the joy in having their own children and being able to have grandkids like that's that's killing off whole family trees of humanity i don't know how else to put that other than that's a hatred for for humanity it's a hatred for sanity and for reality and and it's a hatred for those most innocent among us and the, the most vulnerable that are being severely confused in these spiritual as well as psychological attacks that are happening if you love someone you don't allow them to be confused you don't continue to perpetuate this psychosis upon them that is the most unhealthy thing i can imagine so i put those both in the same category and i know that you care deeply about that as well dan i i think those are central issues. I don't know how you can ignore that when thinking about the leaders that you're choosing for the future. Oh, absolutely not. It is it's foundational to, uh, it's, it's, some people think, well, it's just politics. I just want to live my life. No, that, that is your, your life. <laughs> that is how you live your day-to-day -day experience. You know, I think that if, how do I say this? If, if you take our time right now, go back a couple thousand or 4,000 years or something, historians were talking about us, We'll say 4,000 years in the future. I don't think there'll be a 4,000 years in the future, but that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. <laughs> right, right, right. They would talk about a, a society that worshiped multiple gods like Moloch and so forth, and how 
that that their worship of those gods cut off generations, as you were saying, and, and, and it completely uh, imploded their, their their culture. And that's exactly what we're doing. You know, insert the name of God you want. It's the same thing that's been going on throughout the world history, ever since the Garden of Eden and, and, and eating of that fruit, you know, that the enemy has been after us ever since then, and he still is. And and what a unique, wonderful time of history that we've been able to share to be in this country that says, no, 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 we're going to put these three things in the forefront of our citizens, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, but, but they knew when they wrote that, that, that would only work if we kept a moral society, yeah. it, it, you know, because who defines happiness, who defines life, who, you know, who, you start changing, yeah. you, you put it in the hands of other people, they redefine everything. And, and that's where we're at, at today. Yeah. Um, so that's what John Adams said. The Constitution itself is only fit for a moral that he helped write it. Yeah, <laughs> it's only yeah. fit for a moral and religious people. It's it's wholly unfit for mm-hmm. any other. And we see that now. We've changed the game so much that we try to take the same rules and like apply it down to the top. And it's not really fitting because <clears throat> the foundation underneath has crumbled and changed to become yeah, something entirely yeah. different. Yeah. And, and this is honestly, this is where I battle my myself regularly because you got to be engaged with both battles right the 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 first purpose of the church is to make disciples you Mm -hmm. know if we were making disciples we wouldn't be voting people in who were destroying life liberty and the pursuit of happiness but since the church has been more maybe more focused on politics or maybe more focused on internal things whatever it is they haven't been discipling like they could or should that the church isn't growing followers of jesus they might be growing nice crowds that like love concerts or something, but they're not really making hard disciples of Jesus Christ that, that guide their life through scripture, uh, uh, that scripture guides their life. Uh, Because we're not doing that, everything else is is falling and failing. So it's like, I I focus on politics. I focus on what I need to vote or on the criteria you mentioned. And and I don't know if I want to put it in those words, that those, that's a great way to, to to categorize it Uh, because those represent me. But the problem is, there's as many people who that does not represent now, Yeah, you know, and I, and I can't force that. I can't say, no, you need to agree with me. I'm going to argue with you and debate and make you agree. It's like, oh, that might work a little bit. Um, I need to introduce you to Jesus because he transforms you. Yeah. And not, not that you agree with me, but now we'll both agree with Jesus, you, you mm-hmm. know? And yeah. so that's, that's the battle that, that we face is, is interesting to even be part of this beautiful experiment of America. And, and I hope, I hope that through all of this will actually lead to more to revival than, Mm -hmm. than to, you know, blood in the streets and burning cities down. Certainly. Yeah, Um, absolutely. But it all, it all go, that that puts double weight on us because we do have to engage in politics, but we have to engage in our real purpose of discipleship and make sure Mm -hmm. we're not just, you know, trying to make them disciples of a political party or a political platform, but disciples of Jesus Christ, who then defines the political party and the political platform. So anyway, that's, that's, yeah. that's the, the, the struggle that we have, I think, as believers. What we see is what's in front of us. So here's a bill or here's a politician. That, here's someone who says in a crowd, Jesus is Lord. And they say, well, you're in the wrong <laughs> rally. You're in the wrong rally. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, oh man, think, that feels like it's been six months ago that that happened, but it was just like last week. And was it? Yeah, I can't it, even pay. I don't even know. It's crazy. That... All I know is I'm garbage, and you know. <laughs> oh yeah, that's and right. Deplorable oh, and, man. And, you know all the things. <laughs> This is a bumper sticker election if there ever was oh, one. Man. So now we've got the choice between the crazy cat ladies and the garbage people. Fight! <laughs> <laughs> Film uh, at 11. Oh, I, I don't even know who's going to win in this battle. They truly hate us. They oh, hate yeah. Christians. Yeah. Maybe you can say because of Jesus, but we stay, We do stand in their way if we get up and vote. We yeah. stand in their way. And so they try to get us to not vote and to talk us down and to dumb us down and to do all this stuff. And it's like, you got to, as a Christian, you've got to go vote. You are the only thing between this nation surviving and this mm-hmm. nation going down the toilet. It's been going down the last few decades. I mean, we can't sit around and not vote. Yeah. Well, and I think there's a lot of people that struggle again with the choices that are there. I mm-hmm. think that, uh, as I will say, you know, again, that lone voice in the wilderness with a picket sign, we've got to get more invested in the primaries is where I tend to, to say, because you can make yeah. a lot bigger difference yeah. if you have, uh, better candidates to choose from, but you know, that, that needs to be in the background that if you're more involved in the process, if you just show up one day a week, then the political, 
um, like the the political animals that are there. Most most often they're on the left. You have some on the right as well. But the people that just live and breathe this stuff all the time, they make their money at it. They're like, we're we're gonna do we're gonna work twice as hard every single time. Like I'm not like that. I have a family. I have a job. I have a mission. I have a life. Like right. that's not. But but I care about this. And the people that are the most invested tend to be on the left because the government is their god. Frankly, like exactly. this is all that they have. This is what they worship. This is what they want. And they recognize they push harder than you can possibly imagine to make sure that they have control. Because if you look mm -hmm. at like the Marxist ideology, I know we're going up, just just follow me on this kangaroo rabbit trail, won't you? Um, the, the It's all about power. So they look at the ability to seed, the ability to um, to topple institutions of power so that they can then remake society in the Marxist image because they believe that they, that's what they believe, that they this is how fairness, this is how equality, this is how equity will be achieved is event, the state has to control everything and then the state can eventually like equal everything out and then and then fade away because it won't be necessary anymore. Um, that has never once happened in the history of humanity yeah. since the the uh lifetime of Karl Marx but you know never let that stop him from from trying yet again to bang their head against that brick wall um and it's it's a damaging philosophy for that reason but I guess the reason I bring that up is because we want to go in and do our civic duty and we're disappointed when we don't have great choices but it's probably because we didn't invest in all not nearly as much uh, yeah. into this political system as the people that are trying to destroy your nation and brainwash your children so all of that to be be said I think we should be more involved in the primaries we should have better options but we can if they let you based on the options before oh that's a, that's the only one candidate that went through primary that's tomorrow's episode. You know what? That's a great point, though. It really is. Like yeah. the people that are crying so loud to save democracy. Uh, in, it's ironic that it's coming from the mouth of someone who completely subverted, who basically killed democracy in order to save it. That's just something for the history books. Thought? Again, that's a little footnote over there. If we were a democracy, we're not anymore. Um, I I think the the concern for the Christian is that you cannot deny your conscience. Um, so I'm never asking somebody to vote against their um, someone that they absolutely believe is evil or that they're not going to be able to get behind. So don't deny your conscience, but we should be prayed up and we should be educated on all of these things. There's also more than just one name on the ballot, no matter where you live. So yeah. if you're just all done with the top of the ticket, you don't even want to think about that anymore. You still have senators, you still have governors, you still have school boards, you have city council, you have judges. And on my ballot, there are, I think, seven different judicial races because they're all in, in our state. We get to vote to retain or not um, the judges that were initially appointed, which is a wonderful freedom. I love that. Um, and some of those judges are have a good record, solid record on life, and others have a solid record against life. So I can take that and make my determination over who I, don't I know think how will to find that. justice. How do you find out? Um, I'll link it down below. So okay. um, there's our groups, our, our friends at Pulse, Life Advocates, have a handy little like judges info guide. Nice. They're, they're not going to tell you who to vote for, but they're going to tell sure. you if there's any anything on record. And on some of them, they don't have a record on the issue of life, but on others they do. So you can look it up by your district and you can get at least a little bit of background information because all you, you don't get any parties on those. Uh, so uh, you can't really yeah. make any assumptions. I, that's they're one of the hardest. Yeah. Uh, that's so, the worst part of the election for me. I'm like, I, I don't know. That looks like a nice name. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I'm like, I, I hate to affirm someone who I know is sure not affirmable. <laughs> well, and, and I, used being to, I used to say, when in doubt, vote no. Just yeah. like vote everybody out I've and then we'll start before. again. And, and I think and there's so some really that's, good ones. That's yeah. tried and true. But yes, <laughs> there may be some that you don't want to vote out. So education is always good in the interest of education. You can go to Pulse for Life. Dot org and they have their voter guide in their resources but i will also put an easy link down below too i think i also linked to it on our facebook page at faith works live if you don't follow us yet here's a good excuse to do so it's there we go time. never a better time than now um but the um so so there's so many offices even if you know you're sick of the war of the yard signs and the bumper stickers and getting called garbage people i mean it's for me that's just another day that ends in y and i own it like just because I'm garbage doesn't mean I can't do great things. It's a garbage can, not hey, a garbage cannot. I don't. I, I, ooh, uh, <laughs> I, I just figure I don't have to take showers anymore. Right. Just, just embrace <laughs> it. Just I mean, embrace hey. it. We're the basket of deplorables. In the <laughs>
In today's world, security has never been more vital. And at FaithWorks Live, we're proud to partner with Veriguard Security. It's a professional physical security service, and they're really raising the bar in security and private investigations. Whether you need a team of professional officers to protect what you have worked hard to build, or their mobile security units for multiple properties or large locations, from business or corporate properties to your home or neighborhood. Perhaps you've got an event coming up. They secure quality security coverage for events large and small because it's about peace of mind and protecting you, your family, your team, and your property. Settle for nothing less than the best when it comes to your security. You shouldn't have to compromise. When it comes to security, you can trust Veriguard. Contact them today at veriguard.us. That's V-A-R-A guard.us. For security service, you can trust Veriguard. When a woman faces an unplanned pregnancy, every possible emotion goes through her head. Where can she go for help and for hope? She can go to Inner Visions. Here in our metro, we have two healthcare clinics where she will find hope and help. From free pregnancy testing and STD testing to free ultrasounds, Inner Vision serves women and men with STDs who find themselves in vulnerable situations. They're completely free of charge because of generous donations from folks like you. And their medical clinics help their patients get all the information that they deserve that empowers them to make life-affirming decisions. That's what they do at InterVisions Healthcare Clinics right here in Des Moines. Learn more at intervisionshealthcare.org. That's intervisionshealthcare.org. And you can call 24 hours a day at 515-440-CARE. That's 515-440-2273. I do think that the conscience is real. You should, when it is in our power to do good, we should do the most good with our vote that we possibly can. I see it as a resource the same way God's given us a resource. And like I said, I think if we're talking about life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness or or property, right? Security of property, those are major things that are that can easily define the differences between the candidates. I think every candidate that has a record has spoken or or has done things like you've got one candidate that's been president and you've got another candidate that's been vice president. So just evaluate their record, which one is better at defending life? who who is willing to acknowledge the reality of God's creation and the value inherent in each individual, which one is going to give you the most liberty or defend your liberty? Not the fake, like, I can kill my baby if I want to because freedom. That's not what that means. What that means is... Are they going, is government going to stay out of your way and not impede your God-given rights, like to worship, like to speak freely? They're not going to put you in jail because you disagree with them politically. They're not going to right. shut down churches because of some sort of, of health emergency. Let's just say hypothetically that that could it ever happen. Happens. They're not, <laughs> they're not going to try to shove, you know, experimental chemicals in your body for your own good, or else mm. you can't run a business or go to school. They're not going to try to shut down your business or your means of making a living simply because you disagree with them. They're not going to show up with FBI armed FBI agents at your front door because you had the temerity to pray outside an abortion clinic because you have, you know, the, the record, the audacity to speak out uh, on political topics. They're not going to threaten you in that way. I'm just saying, yeah. I'm just saying there's a difference when it comes to All the to things they liberty. say Trump's going to do. Uh, that he didn't, <laughs> but he didn't though. Uh, that's, <laughs> That's the scary thing. And then during the Biden administration, they have. And That's every single one of those examples, all tongue firmly in cheek, because all, they're actual headlines. It's happening, yeah. Real people that are happening. And, and it's, again, we have to be aware of this. We have to be informed as we make our decisions, because I believe God does hold us accountable to these things. If we know to do good, if we fail to do it, it is sin. So I, we've got to have clean consciences as we go into the voting booths. We need to be informed. We need to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves, I think, as we approach this, because this is a way we can engage with the world. And I think, again, the pursuit of happiness doesn't just mean happy, happy, joy, joy, uh, because that's a feeling that could be manufactured 
manufactured and can go away as soon as your paycheck does from all the extra taxes that you're paying. So there's a problem there. I think that we are voting for prosperity. We're voting for flourishing when we vote for security, when we vote for the rule of law, when we say we're not going to allow crime to run rampant in the streets. We're not going to defund the police. We're going to strengthen our police. We're going to strengthen our security at the border. We're going to make sure that the people that come into the country are are worthy of being here. They're going to obey our laws. They're that they are not going to come in and hurt innocent citizens. We're going to protect our people because that's what you do when you love. That's what you do when you care for the vulnerable. We're all becoming more and more vulnerable the less secure we are. Our, the government should not be stealing more money than any more money than necessary from your paycheck. They should not be taking your productivity and they should not be devaluing your currency as a result. Like all the things that go into the economy, I believe, have to do with a respect for property and a respect that God says not to steal. So mm -hmm. first and foremost, government should not steal from you. I don't care how good their reason is. I don't care that they say they're going to help the poor with that. That's my responsibility. God, yeah. God enabled me to work. He enabled me to add value. And so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to give, I'm going to be generous with what I have, but government does not have the right to steal my money because they claim they can spend it better. And that's where government money comes from. There's no such thing, y'all. There's no such thing as government money. It means they stole it from you and me and they mm -hmm. think they can spend it better than we can. Well, I'm sorry. I, I rebut that and I rebuke it. It is not right to take someone else's productivity. And I think it's ungodly as well. So God entrusts us with all of those things that God entrusts us. He entrusts government to keep us safe, basically. That, that's what it is. He entrusts government yeah. to keep us safe around the country. And uh, I, I'm supposed to be doing everything else. I'm supposed to be the, doing the teaching of the kids, the raising of the kids, that, you know, we're supposed to be making the businesses, making the babies. We're supposed to be encouraging each other, lifting each other up, helping those in need. All of those things we can totally do. We just got to get the government off our backs. Exactly. Exactly. It, it, it drives me crazy when people say, well, we need, we need the government to like, you know, feed the homeless and the care for the poor and everything. I think, okay, we, we've grown up in that, so we assume that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, but, you know, I, I spent last night, most of last night, uh, making bacon and cooking some potatoes because on Saturday, we're going to make breakfast burritos and take them into homeless camps. And uh, we got sausage that's we're awesome. going to do tonight. And, and so th that's- I bet topic. the whole house smells good too. The whole house smells like <laughs> heaven. And not, not, not like the temple because they didn't have, you know, for, <laughs> But it does smell to like clarify. heaven. <laughs> and, and I think I, I, I'm, our teams will go into homeless camps on Saturday and we're going to personally hand face-to-face -face breakfast burritos to people that we have seen. We see every two weeks and we know them. Some know my name, some we do, but we all know each other. We're building mm -hmm. relationships. The government can't do that. You oh. know, as a matter of fact, the government keeps moving them around and shifting them around and trying to keep everybody happy. And, and, I, and, I, and I get it. It's, it's, it's it, you know, I, that's a whole different issue, but but I mean, homeless homelessness is growing because yeah. the pursuit of happiness and, and life and liberty, you know, has been dwindling, and so we got more people in the homeless, and that's causing friction because now we got brand new condos and apartment complexes built being built by the river where the homeless live, and then they're trying to get rid of the homeless because we don't want you yeah. to buy our house, and I get that totally, get that. Uh, I, I actually, I got a call from a, a company yesterday threatening us saying, hey, don't ever go on our property. Can, we'll, we'll sneak on their par pro property and their parking lot and oh. grill and stuff. I, I said, hey, it's, it's your property. You get you get to do that. You get to say that. But they were talking about all the problems they're having with homelessness. You know, people are starting fires, their employees being threatened by knives and everything. And I said, well, we were kind of hoping if they were fed, maybe they wouldn't mm -hmm. cause that many problems. But I said, yeah. it's your property. I have no problem, you know, apologize, sure. everything. But uh, it's a friction that's going on because the government right. can't do it. It's my point. Uh, yeah. the, the church can, we can, if, and it just just think. Okay, it's a one, we're one little little speck of a church in the middle of nowhere. What if all the churches did a little bit? You know, mm -hmm. you know we can't do it all. We, we can go every two weeks. If every yeah. church went every two weeks, we'd have seven days a week. You know, and, and we'd actually have relationships and discipleship, and 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 some of these people have gotten jobs and got and moved on. It's been great. Right. You know their story because we mm -hmm. know them. Um, some never will. That's a whole different ball game. There's some mental health stuff that has to happen. But the point being that if the church was engaged doing its job, then we don't need the government. We can just tell the government just back off, just back down. You know, I don't want to pay you my taxes plus go out and buy you know twenty pounds of bacon and you know it's like I'm doing both 
And it's like, I can do it better. Just At $7 a pound because right. of inflation. <laughs> like, so right. there's all these factors that start to compound, but you're exactly right, Dan. And we know that this can be done because it's yeah. how our country used to work. Yeah, like if exactly. you just ask your grandma or your great grandparents, you know, if they're still alive, just the the how this worked was neighbors would take care of neighbors. And yeah. and I think one of the beautiful things I love being from Iowa, I love the Midwestern life because this is this is still what happens. And I hope it does in other parts of the country, too, is that neighbors band together and help when you have someone like the the farmer that that gets hit by a tornado or that, uh, you know, their their barn burns down or you know someone loses their business to, due to tragedy. Everyone bands together to help. And that's how society has worked. That's how yep. healthy societies work. We do not need the government coming in to tell us how to do this because we already know. We already mm -hmm. know how to love and care for our neighbor. And would you look at that? Actually, that's our command <laughs> as Christians is we're supposed to be loving and helping our neighbor. We're supposed to be giving to those in need, to mourn with those who mourn, to comfort the people in need. And we bet because we are so closely situated that I believe that the person that's closest to the problem should be best equipped to solve the problem. And Definitely. why on earth should the government now steal it? Because it's compulsory, right? I don't get to yeah. choose what the government takes from me now, which is, you know, yeah. Uh, that's not fair. If I'm just going to put a, a suggestion in the equity box, that's really not fair that I don't get to say anything and you get to haul me off to prison if I don't pay you. Like that's not, that's not very fair. Uh, but yeah. the, uh, the, the whole concept that government can then take that and that by sending it to Washington, where they all take a cut and maybe send back two cents of every dollar to come and, and fund a program that they say is going to help clean up the streets or is going to help you know reach out to people with mental illness. Why can't we just take that dollar and directly give it to somebody who's really yeah. going to need it? Like, right. why, why can't we just like flip this on? Its, I'm just saying. We yeah. could flip all this on its head and maybe go back to what it used to be um, yeah. because that's our responsibility anyway. Like just right. because we pay our taxes, we have no idea what the government's spending it on. I'd like to change that by changing who we elect and the policies that are there. But I still have the obligation to care for those people in front of me. And whatever God has placed in my hands is just a gift to empower me to be generous to those, to meet my needs and my family's needs, and then to be generous with those around me who are in need. So that's that like dual citizenship effect like we were talking about so when we approach the vote it's bigger than just our vote it's also yeah. how to live as ambassadors for the kingdom of heaven not only in america in the 21st century but across all time until jesus comes back we have this responsibility to live it out i think we can do that through our vote and mm -hmm. i pray that we are doing that and and have been doing that biblically and that i think that our nation would look a lot different if we did Mm -hmm. I really do. But I also think it's us living out every single day, not just election day, not just Sunday, but every day we live out our faith on in the everyday. That's what the show is all about, that we can help those in need, that we can share the the good news with the poor. We can share the gospel with with any poor and, and those who are desperate and naked on the inside and they don't even know it. We have such yeah. a wealthy nation. We have, we're so comfortable. We're so entertained. And yet we are lonely. We are anxious. We are depressed. We are desperate. You know, people taking their own lives is at an all time high. People going towards drugs, people feeling so lonely. They don't even know that like, they don't even talk to another person. Statistically, they, they don't talk to another person. Like, Mm -hmm. Every four or five, six days, like once a week, maybe they'll meet another human being. This is not the way we were designed to work. We're sicker and sadder than ever before. People need hope. And that hope yeah. cannot come. Like we try to find these political idols that are going to do this job for us. Maybe this person's going to make us feel good for a while. And maybe if my guy or my gal wins, that's going to solve all the problems. It's not. I don't care who gets elected. And I pray that it's a godly leader, a collection of godly leaders. I certainly do. But it's our job to take the hope of nations to our home. And that is only found in Jesus Christ. Exactly. You, that, that's why I think of the stuff we do. You know, we, we started the Senior Supper Club a few years ago where we bring seniors in one night a week for a home cooked meal. You know? And the big thing about that is they it's exactly what you're describing there there you get to a certain age and and maybe uh you live separately from your family they may have moved to different parts of the country uh you might be alone maybe your spouse has passed away of 50 years or what you know you know it's like and there's this loneliness and a sadness and there are people apartment complexes filled with people that are just sitting there in their dark rooms watching television just depressed i mean literally depressed and 
we have found this to be such an amazing thing. The biggest part of this is not the food. They love the food. It's great. But it's, it's coming together with people and just being out. It, it, it's the big, it's an outing. So then now we have a bus. We actually take the bus and go pick people up. And, roll, and we're singing songs. And, and, and there is so much joy in, in their faces. They so much look forward to this. And I'm like, it's just a simple, simple little thing. Uh, that the church has the opportunity just to be a light. Just again, every church is something like that. Reached into their community to the people who are lonely and afraid and 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 depressed and, and and all the things, and and say, you know what? Hey, in the name of Jesus, we're here. And 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 come on out and just hang out. You know, and, and it's not an institution. And now the the government they they do some nice things. They have senior centers and stuff. And a lot of these people don't do that because I don't know by intimidation or whatever. But something about a human saying come come have dinner with me they, they're like okay and they come out and it's just been it's been such a, a, a neat story uh again making actual relationships and friends and 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 now you know what this wasn't even our goal i mean i mean it's always the goal but but uh, some have started coming to church uh, we're, we're kind of a modern-ish church i mean like not like crazy you know but, but like we're, we have a band and it's you know upbeat music and everything generally and and uh it's surprising to me how many of them come and love it. We, we had like two 85 year old ladies get baptized like a month ago. Awesome. And I'm just like, oh, I mean, that's, that's like, I see them, that's like the number. That's why we do what we do. But it's like, I didn't see that coming out of this group. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not like we were out pushing it either, but it's just, they, they, they're coming out and just, they've just fallen in love and re re-energizing their spiritual lives. And, and that, that's that right there. That's the church. Mm -hmm. That's what we're supposed to do. Um, I'm sorry they got you off of the, the the topic, but it's just you know you just no, that's perfect. Is exactly that's but, the church at work and it's the yeah. church on fire. Like I I think that has to be our focus even more. And I'm saying that as like a, a recovering political junkie. Okay, like Go I imbibe it. far more of this stuff and like going combing through the voting records and this soundbite yeah. and that soundbite and you know it's it's far more than healthy probably. But I. I, I do it so you don't have to, y'all. That's yeah. my excuse. I mean, so we, we need both. We do. We do. We have to participate in both. You can't just turn yeah. your back on one and say, no, I only do church stuff, not politics. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, that's the world we live in. We we, we have to blend it, but blend it wisely. So. Yeah. I, I think so. And I think God's put it in our hands to serve. And I don't know what other households are going to do. I don't know what the future is going to look like for my nation other than as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to pray it up. We're going to vote biblically. We're going to think as clearly as possible. We're going to pray some more <laughs> and then we're going to go out and serve God. And I, I pray that my government is one that based on the voice of the people will enable that and will respect us to go out and serve the Lord freely. If they do not, God is still God. And yeah. if they tell me I can't speak, I will obey God and not men. If they tell yeah. me I need to stop talking about this Jesus so much, I need to stop talking about the Bible and preaching the whole counsel of the word of God and sharing all of that and, and talking with fine folks like you on the free airwaves, if it's not free anymore, so be it. I will obey God rather than men. And I've already that I have counted the cost and I've decided that that's just going to be what it is. And, and there will be a cost in every Christian's life, no matter where you are, it's probably going to look different um, for me than it would have in the first century. Clearly, you know, we're on the internet now. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. So they can find me a lot faster. <laughs> But you can being, talk from your closet. You can... <laughs> being canceled in the Roman Empire looked a little yeah. bit different is all yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah. say. <laughs> Usually that involved like coliseums and hungry lions and stuff like that. And for me, it's a lot of mean comments and people threatening my, you know, my children and all of that, which is not fun. But, you know, it, you pay the piper for yeah. your generation. But that being said... I think every Christian needs to understand that we have a responsibility both in the civic realm to govern ourselves wisely and well, but also that we are ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven first and foremost. And that if ever those two come into, we, we vote now so that hopefully we will have quiet and peaceable lives. So we will have godly leaders that hate dishonest gain, that respect and fear the Lord so that we can live quiet and peaceable lives. See, there's that link in the chain. And right, then if one right. breaks down, if we no longer have God fearing people, people that love wisdom and that know where to go for wisdom, hint, hint, it's God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When we no longer have that, then we no longer have the quiet and peaceable lives when we seek to serve God who stands um, in as the antithesis of everything that the spirit of this world tries to foist, all the lies, all the deception, all the, the stealing and the destruction that the devil's trying to perpetuate 
weight against us. You're who's standing in the gap. It's you and me. And so mm -hmm. <laughs> if we don't have the, the safety, if we don't have the protection of godly or God fearing, at least God recognizing governance, um, well then we're, we're on our own, but that's okay because yeah. God plus anybody is a majority. And, and right. that's going to be all right. So that's where I stand, Martin Luther. Here I stand. I can do no <laughs> other. Did. God have mercy on my soul. I think I nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> now is the time to stand for life. For 50 years, Iowans for Life has been the longest standing nonprofit pro-life organization in Iowa. And they stand strong today as pulse life advocates. They believe in defending the defenseless. And that's what we need now, a new generation to value the sanctity of all human life from fertilization till natural death. They advocate at the Capitol, in classrooms, at events across the state of Iowa on abortion, on family planning, on physician-assisted suicide, euthanasia, basically every issue where the culture is so contrary to what God calls us to, they're standing in the gap as defenders of the defense. And they're a voice for the voiceless because they believe in the value of life. And if you do too, sign up for their newsletter and get involved today at pulseforlife.org. That's pulseforlife.org. You know, one, one thing that, that does give me hope that, that let's, let's just pretend that uh, everything goes the opposite of what we hope on, on mm. election day. This one okay. or the next one or the next one, whatever. It sure. keeps inching towards a not very Gamora. good. Gamora burnout yeah and and what has given me hope is my yearly trips to africa where i have seen a society that has seen a transition of government and and one that they're they're friendly enough to the church but but only because as long as the church isn't causing trouble right okay but we have had to cancel trips though because if it gets too close to election they just don't let people assemble mm -hmm. anywhere because they're afraid of dissent, afraid of... They're afraid that we're going to come in and say, hey, we're voting for the other guys. We don't even know who's running, right? Right. But 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 still, that's their... That, I mean, any pockets of people gathering, they, they shut down for a couple months. Hmm. Um, that, so we could be headed there as a country. Now, the hope that I have is that I know these people. Oh, believe me, they're meeting, um, just not as public. It, it, it can't have like a bu bunch of Americans come in and draw a big crowd. That would be too obvious, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're meeting, they're still meeting, they're, they're in homes, they're in gatherings, they're in fields, they're, they're, they're whatever it is, they're, they're, they're getting together and they're worshiping and they're praying and they're serving their God and they're living dynamic Christian lives. It's harder for them, which probably makes them spiritually healthier <laughs> than, mm. than we are. Uh, and I only say that because no matter how much things clamp down, if, if society just, I mean, the society is already changing as that leads to governmental change, uh, we're gonna be fine. It just might look different than we're used to. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, it's worked in China quite well. <laughs> uh, I mean, a lot, there's been a lot of hardship. Uh, people have died, you know, people have had terrible things happen to them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's happening in, in Zimbabwe, you know, it, it, it'll happen here. That, that, that is, that's like called, that's just world history. We, we've been in this beautiful little bubble of history. I would hope, We'll keep it going. You, you know, mm -hmm. I would hope our generation will say, nope, not under my watch, not on my watch. We're not going to let this yeah. thing blow up. Um, but if it does, God's, you know, it's the old cliche, God's still God. I always, I, I always, I get annoyed with all the little memes floating around. God's still God. It's like, okay, <laughs> well, yeah, that's a really dumb picture. Or, <laughs> you know, because uh, he is Lord of Lords. He is, he is. <laughs> Absolutely. I well, mean, it can seem cliche. Yeah, right. But, but I, I don't I don't think that we should take it as one. And and when you said that, you know, the, the passage that popped into my head. And so maybe this would be encouraging. I, I think it's encouraging. Daniel, um, yeah. the second chapter of Daniel, when Daniel, I think, is a is a if we're looking for role models in scripture for our time, Daniel might be a really good one. Daniel and his friends, because they were um, 
I mean, it's hard to imagine being more powerless than to be an exile in a foreign nation. And you're being dragged right. away, especially as young kids, right? So when they first enter into this whole thing, they're like probably teenagers. Yep. I imagine they're young men that show promise. And so the Babylonian Empire was pretty smart about the way that they would take over these other nations. They would import like best and brightest from all of their you know conquered countries and bring them in and inculcate them into their society so that they can then benefit from that. And so Daniel's one of this group and he ends up being very high ranked in Babylonian society and working for two or three different, at least three actually, different um, emperors <laughs> under three different regimes. Um, but originally he was with Nebuchadnezzar who was notoriously both ruthless and egotistical. He's like textbook narcissist all about me because why not? Because he's the all powerful ruler of the most powerful empire that the world had ever seen at that point. So like if you're talking about history books, it's his favorite face it's his face on the money it's his face on everything so yeah. when he comes up against this dream that he has that he can't understand and nobody can give him any insight into this he's like okay great well prove to me that you guys really are wise by explaining to me what my dream is and telling me what i'm not going to tell you what it is you can tell me if you're so wise then you tell me and so everyone's in fear for their lives because they can't do it of course and then we are introduced really to for the second time to daniel in chapter two so that's the background of all of this in case, you know, you want the crash course Sunday school version. Um, in D Daniel gives a beautiful praise to God because he prays, um, P-R-A-Y-S. And then he, <laughs> he gets revealed that God reveals this to him, which he could no have known no other way, right? There's yeah. no other way you could know this, but for God. And then Daniel has a blessing that he bestows on God for revealing this to him. And he says, uh, this is Daniel 2 20. May the name of the Lord be blessed forever and ever for wisdom and power belong to him. It is he who changes the times and the periods. He removes kings and he appoints kings. He gives wisdom to wise men and knowledge to people of understanding. He reveals profound and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells in him. To you, God of my fathers, I give thanks and praise for you have given me wisdom and power. And it's this blessing that Daniel gives. It, it's a reminder that even even though the most powerful man in the in the universe seemingly like in in the history of the world at that time is breathing down his neck and is about to execute him and however many hundreds of people he wants to just because that's what he he could do just because he could frankly um, right. and because a whim of the time which is what happens when you don't have a, a constitutional representative republic i'm just gonna put that out there <laughs> <laughs> there was no law that was keeping him in check. Whatever he said was the law. So this is why we have things like a constitution and we have votes and we have elections and that's, there's there's wisdom there. So I'm going to say in a multitude right. of counsel. Um, but the main point is that God is the one who appoints the boundaries of history. He's the one who sets up kings. He's the one that takes kings down. He's the one that. No so when we say none of this takes him by surprise, that's that's literal. He knows everything. He has already set it forward in motion. And I think it's a beautiful thing to know that this is all under his control. It's all under the sovereign will of God. Even people who do not act according to his moral will, he has accounted for in his sovereign will. Why? So that even if they outright intend evil, and a lot of what Nebuchadnezzar does, a lot of what, you know, just look through, name through through history, a lot of what the Roman emperors did, a lot of what the... Uh, socialist dictators did Mao Zedong and a lot of American presidents may have done evil in the sight of the Lord, but he accounts for all of that in his overall sovereign grand plan. And he allows us to even participate in that to say, you can work wonders in my name. You can do through your obedience, through your small acts of faithfulness. You are bringing the kingdom of God to earth. You're shining that light so that everyone can come. Everyone can see in the darkness around them. The result of evil is going to be some pretty stark darkness, but we can shine all the brighter, no matter how dark it gets out there. We can invite people. We can expose the darkness, Ephesians 5, 11, and then we can call everyone to back to his marvelous light. That's God's vision for his people. It's far bigger than just one nation. It's far bigger than just one time or, or one people group. This is all about eternity. And, mm -hmm. and we get to take this tiny little step in obedience together in eternity for the God that takes down kings, that sets up kings. He doesn't need us to vote. To, like He doesn't need our permission. <laughs> through any of this, I guess I'm trying to make right. that clear, but he invites us to obey him with everything we have, 
He says, I want your heart. I want your whole heart. And, and in this case, you know, you have the opportunity to enact a, a, a glory to me, to enact obedience to me, to be faithful to me. Trust me with that. Be faithful in your vote. Be faithful in the way you treat your kids. <laughs> be faithful in how you spend your money. Be faithful in how you worship me on Sunday. Be faithful in the way that you give to the needy on Monday. Be faithful in everything that you do. And I will, I will not only bless you, but I will work wonders through you that will echo through eternity. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, he, he's, I mean, he's the center of everything. Uh, you know, no, what does Romans say? No, no government. Uh, I'm saying it wrong. No, there's no authority. Um, mm. uh, no, there's but no. But such has been appointed by God. Set by God. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking mm -hmm. of the different translations in my head. That's just tying me up. And, and KJV. KJV. <laughs> Somewhere between King James, NIV, and ESV is. <laughs> um, but God, God has appointed everything, right? Which is yeah. a little tricky when you realize, you know what? Some of these people are outright wicked and, yeah. and who yeah. hate God. Nebuchadnezzar. Like, what I mean, do you mean? <laughs> God used Nebuchadnezzar to, to discipline Judah because they had disobeyed. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, the temple was ransacked. That had to be a bad day. Uh, yeah. People had to die. These teenagers are, are ripped out of their lives, taken to Babylon. And and that was that was that was from God. Now through that, uh, God was still the center. I mean, it's it's. I, I love I love chapter one because I well, love chapter two too. But, but I mean, chapter one when, when Daniel's like, yeah, we can't we can't eat that, you know, because they're like, here we're going to give you the king's food. Like you got the mega grand buffet right there with with every food you can imagine, and they're like, uh, you, you know, I'll, that will defile me. I can't I can't have the pork chops and I can't mm -hmm. have you know, the eel or, you know, whatever, all the stuff that, that the Old Testament says is unclean. And how bold is that for a teenager to to say to the eunuch who's in charge of, they have a three-year program of re-education, right? And, mm. and to, to just say, I, I just can't. I know you killed my parents and ransacked the, the temple and you gave me a new name to follow your God, uh, taking away my name that honors my God. And you're trying to mm. tell me there's different gods, but here's the deal. My God's still alive, no matter what you call me. Uh, and I have to follow him. And I just, I just can't eat that. And, and the, the eunuch was like, well, wait a minute. It, you're not going to be as healthy as the rest. And, and at the end of this cycle of three years, the king's going to kill me. You're asking me to put my life on the line. I mean, that's, that's yeah. a bold ask. And, and Daniel's like, okay, how about we go 10 days and, and, and just then you decide. So he, yeah. he was firm, but also he was willing to say, okay, I, I'll let you win, but, but give chest God. Uh, mm -hmm. to a pagan guy who thinks they just defeated the Yahweh, you know, um, and they do it. And of course they win. And, and it's like, what, what an incredible uh, person of faith that, that, that Daniel was, but that just yeah. shows that, that God is still God. He's the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Jesus is. So no matter what government we're in, no matter what's happening around us, we stand and we stand for God. He wasn't trying to pick a fight. He wasn't being obnoxious. He wasn't like lobbing, you know, internet memes saying oh, you're stupid you know um what do you mean we're not allowed to do that dan i don't say i'm just saying daniel didn't i thought that was my spiritual gift <laughs> he just said i i can't but when it comes to the voting i can't vote for someone who kills children i can't right. you can you can give me all the arguments in the world and all i had a, a another christian say hey I, I it's really hard to decide who to vote for i don't know trump has these moral failures blah blah, blah. she has and i said here's the deal uh, I think both have documented moral failures. Both of them, you know, have issues, blah, blah, blah. This one kills babies and does it aggressively. It, it's not that hard. It's just not that hard. Uh, I can't, in, in, I don't, you know, whatever they do with the rest of the population, you know, like my other friend says, well, but they're better with the seniors or the homeless or the, the whatever, um, the, the other party. Uh, I, 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 I can't get past that first stage of life. Um, you, you, you disqualify yourself. I can't trust what you do with the homeless because I see what you do with the babies. I can't mm -hmm. trust what you do with the elderly because I see it to do the babies. Who's to say that when my grandma's is going to cost too much to keep her alive, you're going to say, you know what, we're kind of done with her anyway. She, she's used, you know, that we already know what they think of life. Yeah. What, what, if, what if my, what if I uh, come down with some type of disease that's going to cost a lot of money? They're just going to say, yeah, we're not going to cover that. So that just shortened my life by 10 years because I know they don't care. They don't value my life. Well, in they Canada, they vote. already do, right? Just right. like we right. talked about in Canada, they already do. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, it's the things you said in, in the beginning, the life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. It, it's if they can't get life, they, it you can't trust them on anything, on anything. Um, 
I think, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't know that Trump is, is like consciously, con, you know, con, with conviction uh, for for life. I, I think he's, he's strategically, as a businessman, saying, well, that's not going to get me elected. It's not a federal issue now anyway. It's a state issue. So he's like, I'm not going to argue something that's not my issue. I, I did my job. I got it back to the states. Uh, he's not going to make a s- national declaration for abortion so i know that much mm-hmm. I'm, I'm kind of circling back but but um it's just there's just no comparison at all between the two yeah. um and, and when it boils down to life and, and but but if that one wins we're going to still have a god we're going to keep fighting and we're going to keep doing yeah. what we do because that's what we do because we can't not fight we yeah, can't no not matter do what. whatever we can to protect those children yeah and i don't require the permission of the government to do so no i nope. think that's the attitude honestly and and that's not me being flippant i mean yeah. i could say it with a smile just because i think it's kind of funny that we have to say that that is the quintessential yeah. Amer- one of the things i love about my country is that that was it it was the give me liberty or give me death you know kind mm. of philosophy that said i would rather i would rather go to my grave knowing you know what it knowing that I stood for what was right than to, to sit by and be comfortable in slavery. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm simply not, I have been bought with a price. I have been set free and there's nothing that government can do. Now that's not to say I'm, I'm willingly disrespectful or, you know, rebellious for no reason, but when it comes down to knowing, doing what God says I, I need to do and knowing for by the way, that I have the constitutional right to do so as well. Thank you, founders, that I, I'm going to stand firm on that. I'm just going to yeah. say, no, I don't need your permission to do what's right. I never did. And I'll do what's I'll pray for you. I'll pray for, for everyone involved in this administration. I, I, I'm simply not going to require government permission to obey God. I already have all the rights that I need, and I'm just going to stand on those. You I'm got going to live without them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and too often Christians just kind of run around waiting for permission to live in the freedom that God's already given them. And I think we have to just reject that as the lie that it is that we're like cowering around. Maybe if I can't offend somebody, I can, I can maybe pray for someone today. I'm like, you don't need that permission. You could pray for, you could pray for all the atheists in your neighborhood and yeah. you don't even, they don't even need to know. Like, exactly. It's, it's exactly. nothing can, you know, nothing can stop you. Right. It's like that meme <laughs> again, memes that go around. They're just like, you know what? You can buy a birthday cake for yourself any day of the year. No one's going to check. Right. You can <laughs> any day you want. You don't need permission. <laughs> and, and it's the same thing to me of like prayer life. Hello. Pray for every all this stuff that you're worried about. Pray for it. Give yeah. it g- pray about it. Give it to God. And he he wants to work on your behalf anyway. So just like he's waiting to listen. He's the king of the universe and time itself. And he loves you more than you can possibly imagine. Just talk to him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's talk to him let's go out and see what we can do let's see what kind of uh you know mischief we can cause in the name of god today <laughs> that's it we're rebels with a cause dan you with me oh uh, absolutely absolutely hey, we ride at dawn <laughs> when did they take prayer out of school Was that it like would have been 60s? in the 50s yeah like 50s mm-hmm. like i was going to school in like the 70s and 80s right so it was close enough that i remember hearing people talking about oh they took prayer out of school and i remember thinking no they didn't I pray all the time in school. Like yeah. no one, no one has ever told me you can't pray in school, you know, because they mm-hmm. didn't know I was praying before every test and praying yeah. for people I saw doing whatever. Uh, it's like, yeah, no, no one can stop you. No one can stop. Yeah, you. and when they try, like, and and since then there have been some pretty famous court cases where maybe a little kindergartner is trying to bow her head over her her peanut butter sandwich, and they try to stop her and say, no, you can't do that. Um, then they go to court and they win because yeah. it's blatantly anti First Amendment. Again, thank right. you, founders, and yeah. not to mention any other religion that wants to set aside special time, they have to be allowed to do that. So if they were to to try to again stop that free expression of religion, it is blatantly anti Christian. And it's also just an unconstitutional and they w- have yeah. one every Oops. time. But but even if again, even if the government decides to hold the double standard, even though they just say it's it's all you Christians, only you Christians are not going to have religious liberty anymore. I'm like, OK, who's get- you in one army? You in yeah. one army is going to stop me. Right. And maybe that's a little less respectful than the tone that Daniel took. But again, going back to him, he just he opened his window. And I find that picture so amazing. So like when prayer is illegal, because th- this would have been a different dictator, but you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> meet the new boss, same as the old boss, Darius comes into yeah, town exactly. and he gets uh, hoodwinked. It kind of sounds like, or sweet talked by his advisors. And they're like, you should make prayer to every God other than you 
illegal. So only people can pray to you. Only people can come to you because you're that so awesome upon a pedestal. And he's like, yeah, I am really. And so it. Yeah. And now that you mentioned it, I guess it should, I should execute anyone who doesn't think I'm God. <laughs> Winner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, vote for Darius. Don't, don't vote for Darius. Uh, that, then Daniel hears this. And I imagine with the sober realization of exactly what this impact could be and i'm sure he knew exactly what was behind this shift people that were trying to just get at him right get rid yeah. of him yeah and he he says oh, I, i'm just gonna do what i've always done yeah and at this point he's much older uh, yeah. and so i can imagine like a, a gray-headed daniel bowing down and then re- actually it's, it's i think it says raises his voice his eyes toward heaven but it says he opened his window to do it yeah so he was not he wasn't putting on a show but this was just what he always did yeah. He was not going to cower in the corner in the closet and hope nobody found out that he was kind of like sneak obey <laughs> covertly. Right. Obey. He's just like, you know, I'm, I'm just going to do what I've always done and yeah. I'm going to do it openly and come what may. Come what you know, may. I'm going to serve my living God. He was like facing, as I recall, facing where the temple, the direction yes, of the temple. The, yeah. And you think he's probably in his 80s then and he arrived there when he was a teenager. So he had like 10 years of experience at the temple uh, as a child. Mm-hmm. And that's still that that still was embedded in his soul that in his 80s, he goes, yeah, I'll die for this. Yeah. I mean, you can't tell me that. I mean, that, that he had an interaction and a, and a living relationship with the living God that that, mm-hmm. that was real. I mean, it, it, it wasn't like, well, I have this religion. And I, I, I don't really believe in your religion. It was no, he mm-hmm. was like God, you know, because yeah. all the interactions you read through Daniel, it was obvious and clear. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And that's not something you can compromise. That's not something that's no. going to shift. So I guess no. as we as we wrap up our our thoughts today, I pray that we will be people that not only have to reassess and like catalog a list of virtues every time we come up to election cycle, but that we will be so deeply grounded in God, in his word, in who he is, and in following after him that anything else... To, to make any other choice that deviates from that will be so abundantly clear. It'll be like a flashing neon sign. Like we go here, we don't go here. I know that decisions can be difficult sometimes, but if we're honestly following after the Lord, it isn't something that we have to reassess every election day. We will know. We will know in, in terms of being like the character of Christ, what is consistent with who he is. And again, that we're doing this every single day, Sunday through Saturday, no matter what. It, this isn't something we're putting on or something that we have to, something radically different that we have to kind of adopt a new identity, that we will be grounded and rooted in Christ, that our minds will be transformed towards the mind of Christ, and that we will realize that who we are and how we live our lives is simply to be following after our master, that we are not our own, but that we will be living this redeemed life. Every single day, we'll be waking up, ready to serve the Lord, voting is one way to do it, giving our time, cooking a bunch of breakfast burritos to give to people, hungry people. It's a great way to do it. Praying for our leaders, Please pray for our leaders every single day, morning and night, if you can, to get in there, no matter who gets in there, no matter who, um, that we will be, that, that we will strengthen our feet on solid ground so that we will be God's people come what may. We will follow after him. I pray that we'll be able to do so in freedom and liberty for many generations to come, but come what may for me and my house, we are going to choose the Lord. 100%, 100%. Serve God and go vote. Yep. Serve God, go vote, love him, uh, love your family, hug your kids. Uh, it's so easy. <laughs> and and that's it. Like, Lord, give us the faith to do what needs to be done today and every day until you return. Help us to shine for you and help yeah. us to bring many, many, many souls to glory, to live with you and to reign with you forever. Again, Maranatha. Like if Jesus comes back today, I'm ready for that. Yeah, I'm yeah, ready yeah. For that. But let's all be busy. Let's right, all get exactly. busy until he comes. Uh, thanks so much, Dan Hudson from Pathway Church in Johnston. Um, uh, as we mentioned, there are lots of judges on the ballot too. Don't forget those. Let's get informed, especially if you're in Iowa. So for Iowa listeners, this would be an Iowa uh, voter guide. But I'm sure there are many organizations are the, the folks at uh, My Faith Votes as well. I can highly recommend them and all of their resources. I'll see if I can link to some relevant stuff down below too. Mm-hmm. But My Faith Votes, they've got stuff from all over the country as well. Mm-hmm. So you can 
can get guides on um, basically anyone that's running for office. They do a great job there as well for ballot resources. If you've already voted, then I pray that you are faithful and, and content in your vote, that it was a biblical vote. And until next time, we have a mission that does not change. No matter who's in the White House, he is on the throne. So we seek to serve him. We seek to love people and to live free. Thanks for listening to Faith Works Live.